The legislative session may be over, but the governing decisions are far from done. We're joined now by Senate President Pro Tem Phil Baruth. Thank you for being here. Absolutely. So a veto session slated for June 20th, mainly for the must-pass budget uh, that the governor has vetoed. By state law, Vermont needs to pass a budget by July 1st, but there's a coalition of 17 progressives and Democrats in the House who may not go along with this override. They want more money for homeless services and programs. Uh, are you concerned about that and are you having conversations with these lawmakers? Right. I think it's fair to say that I and everyone else are concerned about everything. Um, we're concerned about the budget bumping up against the end of the fiscal year. Uh, I'm greatly concerned that the governor vetoed this budget, which had in it expanded emergency resources to transition those people out of the motel program. So by vetoing the budget until the 20th, the governor has enforced a month where we have no money to uh, fund that transition. To your question about who are we talking with, I would say we're talking with everyone. Uh, there are three different ways we could go. The override itself could necessitate very little discussion, or we could, um, instead of overriding, negotiate directly with the governor on something he could sign, or negotiate directly with uh, the folks in the House that you're talking about. That's three possibilities, but there are combinations of those. So it's a way of saying it's complicated and uh, we're working on it. So if no budget and the government yeah. does shut down, do you think lawmakers will really risk that? I don't think so myself. Uh, Vermont is not the national scene, but that doesn't mean there aren't still hard conversations to be had about the transition of the motel program, about that, about DMV fees, uh, different disagreements over the budget. The governor says that this budget, as proposed right now, will increase the cost of living for the average household in Vermont by $1,200. I mean, given that Vermont is already a, a very expensive state to live in, can Vermonters afford that? So I would, I would just start with that figure, the $1,200 per household. That is a completely made-up number. And anyone that you ask in a position of responsibility in the Joint Fiscal Office will tell you that's a made-up number. It's based in part on 180 million that's coming out of S5. S5 was turned into essentially a study, meaning that we need to pass a new bill and the governor will get a chance to veto that bill uh, when, when that moment comes about a year from now, two years from now. So there is no 180 million but the governor and his team continue to act as though that potential sometime in the future for 180 million is operative now and is true now, and it's just not the case. When the governor talks about 30 million in property tax pressure from the universal school meals bill, that's true, that, that is an actual thing. When he talks about the payroll tax that we've used to fund childcare, that's an actual thing. And we're, you know, we're making those decisions. But costs from S5 are not true. They shouldn't be reported as true. And I think it's, you know, on the governor that he continues to use that.